Thank you, Lindsay. Uh, and thank you for, um, for hanging on here today. Appreciate that very much. Uh, as Lindsay just said, my name's Dave Flayton. Um, with Truma BCT, the, the BCT portion stands for Blood Components Technology. Why is that important? Well, I'm, I will go into a little bit of the history of the company, but I think in our space, where you, whether you need point of care cell therapy or back into the factory and, and, and manufacturing, it's, it's uh, important to, to know that there are companies out there that have actually been close to the patient for uh, 50 years, uh, and, and therefore this should bode well for us in that regard. In fact, it was, it was uh, 50 years ago, two gentlemen, uh, Bob Collins and Ran Bellows, north of here about two hours formed a company uh, based on the first two letters of their last name and formed Cobe Laboratories. They quickly moved the operation to Denver, Colorado, and that's where it's been for the last 50 years. So the, we are uh, owned uh, by Terumo Corporation in, uh, out of Tokyo, uh, the Terumo BCT division, though the world headquarters uh, is in Lakewood. Uh, we have over 5,300 associates, uh, regional headquarters around the world. You can see there uh, manufacturing, which which uh, is important when I get into our businesses and what we do. Uh, but we have very much of a global uh, presence. So we have three customer segments: uh, blood centers, which today of the approximately billion dollars in revenue that our division has, uh, they represent uh, close to 75 percent. If you've ever uh, donated blood, uh, most likely the system sitting next to you is a Terumo system. Um, the next hospital therapeutic apheresis cell collections. Um, again, uh, the, we have over 75% uh, market share for these systems in the world. Uh, we have uh, 4,750 of the Optia uh, systems. And uh, if, if you're collecting uh, directly from uh, the patient, as many of the therapies uh, do today, uh, this is uh, um, something we've been doing for a very long time, and we're very good at it. Uh, and and uh, last but not least is, is my team, uh, cell processing. Uh, we're in the uh, research arena uh, as well as uh, clinical arena. We also, uh, as of the last uh, 12 months, have added a point of care cell therapy uh, to the line as well. So let me uh, speak first about cell processing. In particular, we'll divide it into three categories, cell therapy, immunotherapy, and gene therapy. And to be clear, uh, we have medical devices in all three of these uh, arenas uh, that uh, can help in the cell manufacturing uh, needed, needed for these areas. So we've been uh, working the longest with, uh, on the cell therapy uh, to the left column, uh, where uh, recently in the last 12 months uh, there was a study published uh, based on uh, this study. There was a 40 percent cost of goods reduction. For those of you that have, uh, are familiar with the quantum system, um, the quantum system has been questioned in terms of its ability to scale. It won't scale up, but it will scale out very well, and so these cost of goods numbers become very, very important. We've also paired up with a, a, another system of ours called the 2991 for uh, a graft versus host uh, disease study that, uh, that was uh, completed here in the last six months. N with new protocols um, actually coming all the time, we have a scientific research group in-house that uh, helps our customers uh, with new protocols for cell therapy. On the immunotherapy uh, uh, front, uh, we've been working uh, lately with T cells. We have seen uh, very good results, uh, 100, 100 X uh, T cell expansion. Um, uh, the reason I mention that is if you're familiar with the quantum, it, it typically is known for adherent cell uh, expansion, such as mesenchymal stem cells. Uh, but uh, we've had very, very good luck uh, and, and experimentation here with uh, T cell. Um, end to end closed modular CAR T cell process. I'll show you in a second what I mean by that specifically, uh, but um, we do have today in place systems that grew out of this 50 years of research and development uh, that we have that, that help in a, in a very important way uh, in the CAR T process end to end uh, by being closed and modular. Studies are underway uh, to use whole blood as well as uh, cell wash and concentrate uh, systems. And then gene therapy. 
Uh, we have publications, uh, uh, recent publications now on, on lentivirus um, um, uh, amplification, uh, gamma retrovirus protocols, and neural stem cell transduction as well. Uh, the other, the other uh, side of cell processing for us, I was just speaking to the right side of this chart, cell therapy technologies, of which one system we have is the, is the quantum for cell expansion. Interesting enough, you may have heard uh, in the last couple of weeks, Terumo Corporation, our parent company, got uh, a conditional approval for, uh, for HeartSheet, uh, the HeartSheet uh, product, to, uh, to sell that product. Um, and then to the left of that, we have point-of-care cell therapy, which uh, you may know as Harvest, uh, where a uh, product line is, is composed of PRP um, and uh, Ataprep uh, as well. So let's talk again a little bit about cell therapy. Um, th you know, the three areas here, COGS reduction, wash and concentration, and then a research use only bioreactor that we are coming to market with as well. Uh, we did have uh, the study, the 40% came from a study with atherosis. Um, and uh, the other notable facts about that study, uh, ease of technical transfer took about four weeks which is uh, pretty remarkable, and uh, with 10 quantums, which is the scale-out part of this, uh, they were able, able to produce 10 billion cells. Uh, also, a quantum is paired, as I mentioned before, with the 2991 for GVHD, and <clears throat> that uh, COBE 2991 system, uh, inter interesting brief history on that, that was an IBM product that we purchased uh, from IBM um, about uh, 30 year, 20, 20 years ago. Um, but some technologies uh, are ahead of their time, I guess. Uh, and then the, the quantum uh, hollow fiber bioreactor, which, which we, we have had on market now for approximately four years. But there was a, um, uh, a, a strong request from the field to come out with a research use only at a, at a, at a, a price point that would allow people to use uh, the quantum earlier in their, in their research uh, um, before switching into a clinical type of setting. And uh, that is under development for adherent, non-adherent cell expansion. So end to end, what does that mean in our, you know, in our dealings with um, uh, the CAR T uh, world and others these days? Uh, it's collection through administration, and and so if you look at this uh, illustration. Um, the Optia system, as I mentioned before, um, we have 4,750 of those systems in the world. Um, its predecessor was the, the Spectra, uh, and this, this is the gold standard uh, for collections. Um, uh, Elutra for separation and quantum for expansion. And then the cell wash system, wash and fill, uh, we have uh, a 2991 system today, but we uh, uh, have developed um, a system uh, which doesn't even have a name yet. It's, uh, it has not launched. Uh, however, it's going to be uh, specifically upgraded uh, to do the cell wash um, and, and fill and finish uh, for, uh, for, this, for this area. And then administration. So... I, you know, you see the, the previous picture and you see these individual work cells, and there's always, always, always the controversy of why don't you just combine it into one. Uh, but I thought it would be interesting to have a little bit of a history lesson for those of you who are around in the 80s for the, um, you know, uh, for the, the uh, EIA, enzyme amino assay world, that, that system in the middle uh, is, a, is a, uh, a radioisotope counter for thyroid testing, diagnostic testing. And uh, ultimately what happened is it was replaced by single workstations for low volume or modular workstations for high volume, non-isotopic. And so there's a couple, uh, a couple lessons there. You know, safety, one, and, and number two is this idea of if you, c if you can modularize in a way that does not impact workflow, it's a smart way to approach it. Now, okay, is that just a one-off deal? No, it, it happened again in, in the 2000s. Um, I, I know both these examples because I, I lived both of them. Uh, this one is a histology side of the business where histology was manually, you, you manually stain slides. This was replaced by a semi-automated batch system. That was replaced by automated batch, and that was replaced by um, modular uh, automation. So with each of those, what this doesn't show is on the bottom row, those systems did combine 
combine uh, capabilities, you know, the, the, the uh, capabilities to do additional um, what used to be manual processes. But they were selected very carefully, and in the end it was data management as well uh, that, that helped to uh, speed things along. Because the problem is if you build all in one and you've got one part of that process that holds up, uh, holds up your turnaround time, then you, you have just married yourself to a system uh, that's going to s slow you down dramatically long term. So, so this, this is our approach, um, modular, scale out. Uh, whenever we can and be smart about which of the processes uh, can be automated and should be automated. On the gene therapy side, I, I mentioned before, um, in bullet point form, this gives a little more granularity to that. Lentivirus production at UC Davis, incredible results. A gamma retrovirus production at UFETS. Uh, where, where uh, you know, they're reducing the risk of infection, improves the process control. Again, some of these themes from the 80s and, and 2000s uh, coming through. Neural stem cell uh, transduction um, at City of Hope, uh, north of here in Los Angeles. And uh, great, great results there. I'll just... You know, this is this is kind of this is an interesting part of our of our business now and our portfolio. Uh, but PRP, platelet-rich plasma, bone marrow aspirate concentrate. I have a sales organization that sells direct into physician offices, uh, and then we also sell uh, into hospitals. So, is that is that really the point of us? You know, picking this business up. I, I would say no. We just don't know where these two worlds will merge, where it makes sense for them to overlap. We, we do know it will overlap in certain areas, and we think this prepares us for that world when there is overlap. So, um, so in summary, uh, you know, three reasons uh, I believe uh, that, that BCT will help advance the regenerative medicine industry. We are an innovation leader. Um, Today, uh, Quantum alone, uh, we're in uh, 75 organizations in 25 countries and five continents. Um, we are a, not only an innovation leader, but we're global, uh, with a global footprint uh, that, that uh, helps us uh, as, we, as we bring products to market. Uh, solutions for cell therapy manufacturing. You have seen what our solution is uh, today on the cell uh, therapy side of our business, collections through administration, um, uh, and it's based on a closed system uh, and modular automation. <clears throat> and then finally, uh, solutions for point-of-care cell therapy. Um, again, very, very straightforward systems, autologous. The patient gets their spun down cells back within 15 minutes. Um, you know, say what you will about it. Uh, there's controversy about it. We understand that. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very fast-growing business. But what's inter more interesting about it is for this, for this group, I, I think it, it, it helps prepare us for that, for that customer or that patient interaction uh, that I think is going to come from the cell therapy side and not, not, from, not from point of care. Uh, the, the last thing I'll say is that, that we... Um, we do impact patient care by influencing future cell therapies. That's the best part of my job. And, and the best part of what we do uh, is we, we, help, we help patients at the end of the day. This is, these are sisters, Chris, Christy and Laura. Uh, both had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Uh, both uh, were cured, um, and uh, I, can, I can say that although there were other, obviously there's other science that helped in that in a big way, we were also part of that, uh, that, uh, that process, and that's the, the most uh, rewarding part of, of what we do. So thank you very much.